How's it going? In this Max MSP tutorial, we are going to learn how to make this abstract image painter drawer program uh, where based on an image you load into it and uh, the coordinates of a pixel and the color value at that pixel, it's going to redraw it with some abstract shapes. It's a really cool effect, so let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first thing we always have to do to get started is create a jit.world object. And I'm gonna always give it the parameters at floating one, at FSA one, at FS menu bar. Um, floating one causes the window to float so it won't disappear when we click away from it. And here it is floating and not disappearing away. Uh, FSA one uh, turns on full screen anti-aliasing and FS menu bar turns off the menu bar when we're in full screen. So just some basic parameters. Uh, next, I'm going to create a toggle and patch that into our jit.world object so we can lock our patch, click on it, turn it on, and cause our window to render its output. Um, the next thing we need to do is create a video plane so that we can see the video that we're going to send to our window. And we do that by creating the GL video plane object and giving it the attribute at transform reset to so that it stretches to the edge of our jit.world window. Um, with that set up, the next thing to do is load in the image file, and we're going to use the jit.movie object to do that. I always say vol0 because I usually don't want the volume from whatever movie file coming through. And if we just send it a read message and connect it into our JITL, JIT GL video plane object, when we click on it and we load that image in, so uh, I'm going to use this one because it's got a lot of colors in it, uh, it'll automatically start to render to our video plane because that's an feature of the OpenGL video OpenGL video plane object. Um, we don't have to send any bangs to our movie object to get it to render. It automatically does that. So that's really helpful. Um, and now that we have our image loaded in, the next thing we need to do is um, sample it into a smaller matrix. This way it makes uh, doing all the coordinate grabbing of the pixels and their values much simpler. Um, when we get to that step. If we predefine all the matrix dimensions to be the same size, no matter what the original size of the image is, uh, we don't have to do any fancy coding to change our dimensions. You totally can if you want to, but uh, if you use a high dimension f uh, photo, it might cause low frame rate. Um, so with that in mind, we're gonna damp sample to a standard matrix definition size, 480 by 320. Um, and the next thing we need to do is then get the coordinates of this matrix out. And we can do that using the get cell message. And it's gonna take two variables, uh, an X and a Y, to understand what cell coordinate you're trying to grab. So we need to send this a list of two variables, which we can do by creating a pack object set to II uh, for two integers. Um, and we're gonna use an object called drunk, which is similar to random, um, but it does it in a stepwise pattern. So it's gonna be kind of, uh, rather than jumping all over the place, it'll be within a certain range uh, from the previous random number. So if I do drunk 480 for our X range, and I'm actually gonna do a step of 40, and we're just gonna copy this and change 480 to 320 for our Y range and patch those into our pack object appropriately. And then these just need a bang to uh, output and get those values. And I'm going to use the bang from our middle outlet of our jit.world object with a send and receive pair. Um, and I'm gonna run it through a speed limb object so we can control how quickly this does, although I'm still gonna have it be rather fast because I want it to end up drawing our pictures uh, rather quickly. Um, so now that we're sending this render bang through this uh, speed limb into these drunk objects, this message is grabbing coordinates out. And we can see that if we attach a message box to the right outlet of our JIT dot matrix. And we see it says cell with two coordinates and val with four values that are the color values of that coordinate. The first one is constantly gonna be 255 because that's our alpha plane um, and it won't change. But the others depend are the RGB and this is the cell coordinates. Um, so if we wanna get these values out, which we're going to need to do, um, the easiest way to do that is to use this unpack object. and. Uh, the cell and the val are two sep it's a list of messages basically. Um, so we have to account for the cell and val as their own 
entry in our list. Um, so to do that, we're going to denote them with the symbol S, which stands for symbol, and then we're going to denote our values with the uh, symbol I. So S for cell, I, I for our two coordinates, S for val, and then four I's for our four color values. And that way we will effectively unpack everything from this JIT dot matrix. And now what we need to do that we have, now that we have these coordinate points uh, extracted, we need to pack them together appropriately for our JIT dot LCD object, which is what we're going to use to redraw this image in this window. And so I set it to the same dimensions as our down sampled matrix. Um, these have to match in order for this to draw uh, appropriately in the correct places. Uh, so we're going to take this patch cord and patch uh, it to our JIT.LCD object. So it's the output of the LCD that's going to go to our video plane. And then we just need to send this a load mess object with the message clear. So that way, uh, every time you load this patch up, it's going to send this clear message out to our JIT.LCD, which is going to get our LCD to begin rendering. I'm also going to copy the receive render object uh, because this also needs to receive a bang to output and you noticed our window went from the image to a blank white image because the LCD is now exporting to our video plane um, and we're going to draw here into the LCD object. Um, to do that we are going to use the message paint oval and it's going to take um, to start with it's going to have seven variables um, which after I type I will explain exactly what these are <laughs> um, the first four are the coordinate points uh, the first two are your, going to be your top left coordinate and the bot the next two are your bottom right coordinate and from those two coordinate points it knows how to draw the shape uh, in the window and then the last three are your RGB so we need to use our cell coordinate points our two of them to determine our first our first four variables here and then we have to use our RGB to match this RGB so it's really easy we just got to do some math and think about the correct order of these um, so to start with the paint oval and its four, first four coordinates um, we will have to create a pack object that has the four coordinates and then the four color values um, and we can skip this first outlet of our unpack because that's our cell message so this is going to be one of our coordinate points and we can just patch these straight in like this and that's gonna this x uh, y value is going to give us our top left corner so if we want to get the bottom right corner uh, and draw a shape around those two coordinate points we just need to add a certain value to these and I'm going to start with 20 so if we add 20 here and patch that in there and then copy this and take that next one and patch that in there we're now going to draw an oval around this coordinate point uh, as the top left corner and it's going to be a circle with this size uh, of pixels and we can change these values to change the size of our oval so if we patch that into our message that's going to get it to start um, but we still need these three color values um, and that's going to come from these values here we're going to skip this s because this s is our vowel we're going to skip this i because that's our alpha value um, and this is our red value so we're going to patch that through this is our green so we're going to patch that through we're going to patch this for our blue and then we're going to finally patch that into our lcd and you'll notice it's already starting to draw the ovals in the correct position from that original image and we already have completed this project um, so there you go, that is your abstract image drawer. But if you want to make this slightly fancier, there's uh, some other things we can do just to spice it up. One is we can copy this drunk object and change the parameters to say like 15, 10 and patch that into the, these addition objects. And that's going to get us um, different sizes. Uh, so now we'll have a range of sizes of these circles coming in. Um, you, we can add a eighth variable to our paint oval message um, for alpha, which is transparency, uh, and changing this will give it a more photorealistic watercolor effect, which is really cool. Um, we're not going to take this alpha value though because it's constant and that's not going to be helpful to us. So instead to do something a little bit 
uh, more fancy, I'm going to use the JIT.RGB to Luma object, which is going to convert our four plane matrix down to a black and white matrix. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing where I had this JIT.matrix object. We're going to send it the exact same get cell message, have the same exact unpack pulled from here uh, in from this right outlet. And then we're going to send the, not the first one, because that's still our alpha, but the first that is our of our color, which is this red one. And if we add another symbol here for our eighth variable, we can patch that to here and start getting a, a luminance value to determine the transparency of our circles. So if I double click this cl uh, clear message again, we'll start to see, okay, yeah, we have some circles that are more transparent than others. What else can we do to spice this up still? We can add an integer box here to change the speed um, in case we want it to draw faster or slower. Um, the higher this value is, the slower it's going to draw. And then finally, the last thing that we can quickly add into this to spice it up is instead of a paint oval message, we could also have a paint rect message. The JIT.LCD object has tons of messages for drawing different shapes. Um, and then if we just want our list to switch between the two of these, we're just going to need a gate object with two in it. So we have two outlets, um, one here and one there, and it's our list that we want to pass through the gate. And we just want to have something randomly decide what gate outlet it's going to come out of. So you can use the decide object, which will give you a random zero or a one. Um, but we need it to be a one or a two because uh, we don't want our, a zero is going to cause the gate to close. So we have to add a one to our output of our decide. And then similar, this just needs a bang to send its output out. And rather than five, I'm going to set this to 2000. So it'll change shapes randomly every two seconds. And you look at that. Now we've already got some squares and some circles coming in. I'm going to uh, increase the size of our things. Um, just so that's more apparent and there you go you have your abstract image drawer um, yeah that was quick hopefully very effective and efficient and you learned some things about max MSP that you didn't know before uh, if there are any questions anything you feel needs further clarification I would be happy to answer those in the questions down in the comments down below um, please make sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful it lets me know I'm doing a good job um, and inspires me to keep making more of these because I really do enjoy making them and sharing my knowledge that I have with max MSP um, so with that said I will see you guys in the next max tutorial video thank you hey as some bonus knowledge for sticking around to the end of the video not only you get to see the completed kind of abstract drawer although it'll draw forever but also i just want to throw in some two things i forgot to mention uh one first off this jit dot matrix uh rgb luma thing this needs to be a one plane not a four plane that was an error i made in the video sorry about that uh the other thing if you throw in this trigger object where it says tbl uh and you send your read message through it and have the l outlet which is this first uh, rightmost outlet go into the jit.movie object and then the B outlet uh, go into our load mess clear. Every time you load in a new image, uh, it'll read that message through so you can load the image and then it'll reset the drawing so that uh, it's a fresh blank canvas for it to draw from. Um, and the other thing is if you want to see the original image still, you can attach a jit.p window to this matrix object that's holding our image file and then you can kind of compare the original to this and you know it looks pretty sweet uh especially when you have that side by side comparison cool so again thanks for sticking around to the end of the video uh and i appreciate it